Boy, that took me back. Huh? It's not a live trivia show with Quiz Daddy if there aren't some TDs, tech diffs. You know, here's what I think would happen. Um, either there are far too many of you trying to play who, and we can't accommodate you, which, you know, that's possible. This is new, new for us here at Bougie. Or the grid in California, where I'm currently located, is overrun because of the Lakers-Warriors game one happening right now. We got a little competition, but uh, between the people watching Lakers-Warriors and the people playing live trivia on an app about 90s music, I don't know there's much of a crossover there. So you made it. Thanks for hanging with me. Welcome back to Bougie. Night two of our five-night run here. Were you here last night for movie trivia? I know Frogger was and Ryan Norell and Jason Wasserberger. Wasserberger. Jay Silverman saw you on Twitter, and DDT, I think it was, someone else. On. Here's the real truth, okay? You want to know, know what actually happened? I was all set to go live. Everything was fine. The app works great. And then I saw Farad tweeted about the show. I was like, all right, let me retweet Farad and include the link to the you know, download. And then when I went to switch out the app to go to Twitter, I'm using my phone. This is my phone that I'm on, and I guess it's a very fragile app. You can't, once you're on Bougie... In the lobby, you can't switch out. So lesson learned. My apologies. And then it happened again because I tried. Look, I'm never doing that again. Okay? We won't have any more issues. Knock on. Wood. So welcome back to those of you who came in last night. We got 88 of you here tonight. We only had like 50, 60 something last night. So we're already gaining followers and gaining users. I love to see it. If this is your first rodeo, let me introduce myself. I am your hostess with the mostest. Scott Rogowski, a.k.a. Bougie Boy, tell him. And it's going up on a Tuesday as we throw it back to my favorite decade, the 90s. Yes! From Wounded Knee to the Latimer Massacre, the Dreyfus Affair to the Klondike Gold Rush, the first Summer Olympics, the discovery of radioactivity, the introduction of Lipton Tea, the 90s had it all, baby! What's that? The 1990s? Oh, no! I prepped the wrong century. I had all these questions about Grover Cleveland and Cap Anson ready to go. Fine. Forget it. I'll quiz you on the 1990s, specifically 90s music. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor tonight, iRocker, for providing us with the prizes. Yeah, we got prizes. I'm going to ask you eight questions. You'll have 10 seconds to answer each one. If you get them all right and you're among the five quickest to do so... You'll be the new owner of iRocker's Vibe Waterproof Bluetooth Speaker. How appropriate for the music trivia night. We got five speakers to give away to the top five winners. So best of luck to you and your fingers. Remember, you got to be quick on the draw here on Bougie. If there's a tiebreaker in the last question, it's going to be up to the quickest who are going to win. And even if you don't win, you're getting a chance to shop the iRocker site at the end of the show with an exclusive 15% off promo code. And I didn't mention this last night, so... Again, going behind the curtain. I, I, I said 15% off last night, and I was thinking about that 15%. And I don't know, it didn't seem too impressive to me. You know, I mean, a lot of websites offer 20% off anyway, right? So I called the boss, man, and I said, look, any chance you could up the offer a little bit, make it more of a discount for all my bougie buddies out there? And here's the inside scoop. iRocker is having a spring cleaning inventory overhaul sale on their site. They have discounts up to 50% off on select items already. And that 15% promo code is on top of the discounts already being given out. So really, how does 65% off sound? You're welcome. So if you get bounced around the room tonight, you get out of the game, stick around to the end, take advantage of that deal. Oh, and if you still want to be in it to win it, even if you get a question wrong, you can jump back in with a second chance. You'll see that button pop up on your screen. Okay, enough housekeeping. Are you ready to smash some pumpkins? Are you ready to lose your religion? Chase waterfalls? Steal my sunshine? Tub thump? I'm going to make you sweat. Ooh, you don't want to miss a thing. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to bougie. Are you ready to get down to the nitty gritty and bougie on reggae woman? That's not really a 90s song, but let's kick off this bittersweet symphony as we dial it all the way back to 1991 for Kimuro Numero Uno. We're going to start with a song that arguably defined the entire decade. For Q1. Smells Like Teen Spirit was a hit for which 90s grunge band? Mud Honey, Alice in Chains, or Nirvana? Look, they start easy, folks. You really should know this one. 
And if you can hear the music in the background, I do have a 90s music playlist going. I think this is Dave Matthews. I apologize. The songwriter of this class had claimed he was trying to write the ultimate pop tune while admittedly ripping off the Pixies. Well, he nailed it. And the song became the antithesis of the anti-mainstream sentiment the band stood for. The writer, Kurt Cobain. His band, Nirvana. And all 82 of you got that right. I had no doubts. We want to throw you a gimme there. It's basically the greatest product placement in pop music history, the song. In fact, Cobain grew to resent the song's popularity, saying, quote, It's embarrassing that a song about deodorant became my number one hit. I don't even wear teen spirit. I'm more of a speed stick guy. End quote. But never mind that. Let's move on to Cumero, Numero, Tumero. What are siblings if not built-in bandmates? Three hermanos from Oklahoma understood this well and decided to capitalize. For Q2, brothers Isaac, Taylor, and Zach made up which iconic 90s pop group? The New Radicals, Matchbox 20, or Hanson? Mm. What are we thinking here? Well, these boys are now men in their 40s, still releasing new music but they'll never top their teenage success when their debut album went four times platinum in the U.S. and sold 10 million copies worldwide on the strength of their chart-topping single, Mbap, Bap, Mbap, Mbap. You know I'm talking about, Hanson. We lost a few of you there. 63 getting it right. Three getting Mbapped out of here. How did we lose? Some of you didn't answer that one. I don't know what happened there. Check your connectivity. By the way, they don't just make music, these Hanson bros. They know you got to diversify in this business. In 2013, they entered the craft brew game with their own beer called, what else? Mmm, hops. That's true. Let's hop along to the next question. Did you know a survey taken in the summer of 1998 showed that one out of every five boys in the state of Florida was in a band? If this is a 90s music trivia show, then we got to ask about boy bands for Q3. Who of the following was a member of the Backstreet Boys? A.J. McLean, J.C. Chasse, or D.B. Cooper? Would have been nice if the Backstreet Boys queued up right here, but no, I'm not that good with the music cues. Formed in the back streets of O-Town, a.k.a. Orlando, Florida, back in 93, these boys chalked up six top ten hits over their career. True fans know the five members on a first-name basis. Nick, Howie, Kevin, Brian, and AJ, AJ McLean. Yeah, a little tougher there. Fifteen of you getting knocked out. I bet you chose J.C. Chazé, right? Well, he was part of the NSYNC clan. I hope he didn't choose D.B. Cooper because that was a notorious skyjacker who may very well have produced several boy band records with the $200,000 he absconded with in 1971. I don't know. We don't know where he went. We don't know where the money is. It's one of the greatest mysteries of all time. Let's quit playing games and fly on to the next question. A song recorded by Whitney Houston for the 1992 movie The Bodyguard chopped, topped the charts, chopped the tarts, and stayed there for 14 straight weeks. No doubt you know it, but did you know Miss Houston did not write it? For Q2, who originally wrote and recorded? I will always love you. Dolly Parton, Prince, or Elvis Presley? And I, 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 I will always love you. I'm trying to break your screen. There are too many covers of this legendary song to even count. Weirdly, this version of the tune wouldn't even exist without direct intervention from the Bodyguard co-star Kevin Costner, who suggested Whitney give it a shot for the movie, but a different diva made it famous first, that being Dolly Parton. Mm-hmm. Dollywood. We're going off to Dollywood. Hello, Dolly, says 56. Yes, eight of you getting booted. Elvis wanted to cover it, but Dolly balked at Colonel Tom Parker's insistence that Elvis retains 50% of the publishing rights. Ah, the snowman always makes it snow. Dolly later said that Whitney's record-breaking cover netted her enough money to buy Graceland. Lord have mercy. We're working 925 as we roll past the halfway point of this quiz. There's only eight questions here, guys. These go fast, despite the 15-minute delay. You know that feeling when you're at a party and the guy wearing a vintage cardigan starts making his way towards the acoustic guitar? 100 bucks says he's going to play the song this question's about. For Q5, what was the original working title for the 1995 hit Wonderwall by Oasis? Wishing well, wishing stone, or wonder well. You're my wonder well. I think this song is now considered classic rock because those of us who listen to Oasis as kids are now old AF. Widely regarded as the band's greatest hit, its original name maybe wasn't as catchy and certainly made a lot less sense because what exactly is a wishing stone anyway? Is that some dumb British thing? 
Whatever it is, we got a savage question here, folks. Oh, because Wishing Stone's the right answer. 38 of you, boy, boing, 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 you're out of here. Boom. But 16, it's, it's a wonder you got this right, because that was a toughie at Q5. Ouchie, wowie. Where did the name Wonderwall come from? It was inspired by George Harrison's debut solo album, Wonderwall Music, which I listened to last night. A lot of sitar. Noel Gallagher changed the name of his song, and I said, maybe that was a good idea. Fun fact, Wonderwall became the first 90s song to reach 1 billion streams on Spotify. That happened in October 2020. Let's walk the winding road to the next question, shall we? In music, sampling is when one artist borrows part of another artist's song and repurposes it into their own creation. One very famous example is a certified 90s banger that I'm asking about here for Q6 with a hundred plus of you watching. MC Hammer's You Can't Touch This prominently features a sample from a song by which artist? Rick James, Michael Jackson, or Paul McCartney? Maybe this should have been Q5. Is this a little easier? I don't know. I messed around with the order a little bit. There was a time in America when it was always hammer time. This song was so popular it cracked the top 10 in every US chart. Not bad for a former bat boy. Perhaps the reason for its runaway popularity was the fact that it featured a famous bass lick from the smash hit, Super Frank. Yeah, all you got this one right. Rick James, bitch. 22, Super Frank guy. Granted, we probably could have switched those, the orders of those. I'll take the L on that. Sorry for all those of you lost on Wishing Stone. Um, but there's that second chance, remember? Interestingly, Hammer did this without permission from Rick James. He took the sample and then Rick sued him for copyright infringement. Big whoops. Hammer ultimately agreed to make James a co-composer, cutting him on the millions of dollars that the record earned, inspiring the popular catchphrase, stop, it's out of court settlement time. Right now, it's time for the next question, the penultimate. If you grew up in the 90s, you definitely got a healthy dose of this next song at your elementary school skate parties. For Q7, Barbie Girl was released by which Danish-Norwegian dance pop group? Alphabet, Aqua, or soap. Did you know there was more than one Danish-Norwegian dance pop group? Hopefully your knowledge of novelty songs from Danish-Norwegian dance pop groups is up to snuff. This song was also shrouded in lawsuits as it was made without the express written consent of Mattel, the company responsible for Barbie. But in this case, they were all dismissed. The band that dodged that legal bullet was Aqua. Aqua. Only lost three of you there. Yeah, I think, I think that Oasis question maybe could have come here at Q7. All right, well, you know, this is only our second bougie trivia. I mean, it's a very, very small group working on this thing, folks. So if you do have critiques or maybe more helpful comments or praise, you can tweet me, at Scott Rogowski. 19, moving on to the final question. You know, you might think of Aqua as a one-hit wonder, and you're kind of right, but don't forget Dr. Jones, which won Best Danish Hit at the 1997 GAFA Awards. Aqua is actually the most profitable Danish band of all time, selling 33 million albums and singles. That's a lot of Krona. Life in plastic may be fantastic, but let's see how fantastic tonight will be for all you bougie boys and girls in this bougie world as we move on to the final question. It all boils down to this for those iRock or Vibe waterproof speakers. We started this quiz at the beginning of the decade. It's only appropriate we close it out at the end for Q8. What song held the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100 in the final week of 1999? Genie in a Bottle, Smooth, or Bailamos? Oh, these are all bangers. I miss the 90s, folks. This is, these are my songs. Genie in a Bottle. I'm a genie in a bottle. Was the song of the summer in the last year of the 90s, reaching number one on July 31st and holding into September until it was supplanted by Enrique Iglesias and his dance anthem, a.k.a. Dance Them, a term I just invented, Bailamos. But then along came Rob Thomas and Carlos Santana on October 17th, who combined forces to create the unholy smash hit, Smooth, which stayed number one through the end of the 90s, straight into the 2000s. Give me your heart, make it real, I'll just forget about it. And holy for a holies, we got five correct answers on a savage final question we have five speakers, which means we got five winners. How appropriate. You answered all eight questions. Congratulations to Neatly Done, Year of the Tiger, 9821, Master Nighthawk, and Jason Linker, the only one with a photo. Unbelievable, folks. What an ending. 
Our second show, we had five prizes. We got five winners. I love to see it. That Vibe waterproof Bluetooth speaker brought to you by iRocker. You can literally take these things underwater, guys. They offer Bluetooth connectivity up to 33 feet. Rechargeable batteries good for five hours of playtime, and they can fit right into your SUP board with the iRocker action mount. So if you don't have the SUP board and you don't have the action mount, and now you got the speaker, well, now you could uh, now you can buy it at the, at the iRocker site. Make sure you visit your wallet in the Bougie app to claim your prize. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, folks. Well... As Zoot Suit Riot plays, I really wish a different song were playing right now. I wish Semisonic was playing. I wish, I wish the song Closing Time were playing because it is closing time on tonight's show. As we turn off all the lights over, every bougie boy and every bougie girl, big thanks. And I mean that truly, madly, deeply to all my bougie buds for joining me tonight. I asked what to call you guys. Bougie boos, bougie bays. We got some tweets saying bougie buddies, bougie buds. I like that. Do we like bougie buds or bougie buddies better? Maybe I'll just alternate. I know there's no chat built yet. That's where Twitter comes in. We hate that website. We hate it so much, but it's the only way to reach me. So tweet me with your suggestions. Thanks again to iRocker Sup for the speakers. Don't forget, we have three more shows on tap for this week. Same app time, 10 p.m. Eastern, and we will start on time. I promise. 7 p.m. Pacific, same app channel right here on Bougie. Tell your friends to download the app. Look, we got so many more people uh, watching tonight versus last night which was cool so let's keep it going tell your friends to download the app keep spreading the word more fun questions and great prizes are ahead for tomorrow night's video game trivia thursday's star wars trivia may the fourth be with you and friday is going to be sports trivia so start brushing up now on those oh and by the way this is exciting i'm going to turn the music off for this shut it cherry pop and daddies because check this out something else i didn't mention last night but this is kind of important the best thing about bougie is that it's not just for me. You could be a quiz daddy or quiz mommy too. Yes, you could be hosting on bougie. What makes bougie so unique is that anybody can produce and host their own trivia shows with this all-in-one app. There's no one else here. Hello? There's no producer, no director. Maybe I could have used one for those tech issues. But for better or worse, there's nobody else here. It's just me and the app. There's a prompter in here. I got my monitor in here. I can advance the questions with a handy little USB clicker. Yeah, it's that easy. It's crazy. And you can do it too if you want to host your own shows. Just apply to be a creator on that channel. There's a little megaphone icon on the app. You see on the bottom there? Click that. Apply to be a creator. You can have your own channel, host your own shows. Maybe you work with a brand. Maybe you're an influencer. Whatever you want to do. You just want to throw a, a game for your friends. It's that easy. So why not apply? Join me. Maybe you can lead into my show. I'll lead into your show. Maybe I'll be playing your trivia game one of these days. Until I do, I'm Scott Rogowski signing off saying, I go walking in the, in the middle of the, I go walking in the, in the middle of the, I can go walking in the, in the middle of the, I can go walking in the, in the middle of the, I can go walking in the, whoop.